Hello everyone, welcome to our back tutorials. In this video, we are looking at developing method, coding and implementation. You know, for now, we have been considering stages of problem solving and we talked about, we have discussed about problem definition, narrating alternative, evaluation of alternative. While in this video, we'll be looking at developing solutions. So let's look at it's important for us to note that after a particular alternative has been selected, the next thing is to us look at a detailed step-by-step -step solution to the problem under consideration. If that is the case, then we are looking at developing solutions on how the steps to follow towards achieving our goal. So we say for this stage is basically talked about step-by-step -step procedures to solve problems that is what algorithms is all about so algorithms are steps we follow to solve our problems so however algorithms can be represented in several forms forms like pseudocode forms like uh, flowchart you know um, a written like in like in english like statements of the procedures to solve a problem is what silicon is all about why a pragmatic or graphical representation of algorithm is what flowchart is all about so basically both of them is our ways we can use to represent a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a problem having developed a solution just like a building plan just like a building plan that we have when uh, you, you want to make a building you an architectural design will draw a, a architectural design of that building so that is like a, a flow chart for just to be like a flow chart a, a graphical representation of the building you intend to do likewise flow chart is the graphical representation of the program of the problem of the step which follow to solve a particular problem and having done that the next thing is coding and implementation you agree with me that when is an architect has finished designing a building plan the next is that he will give it to a structural engineer a structural engineer who will convert that plan into a real building that is the way it is also having outlined our algorithm on how to solve our problem will be look over we will be now trying to we'll be considering how to use programming tools, the programming language to implement those uh, flowcharts or that algorithm into real code. For example, having designed a maybe we want to solve addition problem to add two numbers. Now we will we'll use a programming tool to implement that solution so that to form things like calculator a calculator was built by a programming tool and other components so using a programming tool which could, which would help help us to implement that design that step by step we have outlined to solve those problems so in trying to convert our sequence of design into a language the computer can understand and this is all this is made process this is made possible through the aim of a programming tool so these tools now these programming tools are instructions they are instructions what what people refer to as code what people call them code um the purpose of writing those instructions is what we call coding so coding in, by default is the purpose of writing a program to solve a particular problem in a particular programming language for example of those languages could be a basic language just basic q basic could be c could be c plus plus could be c sharp it could be java it could be python it could be several of these of of these um, languages you know and it's important for a programmer to have a good understanding of the syntax of the language to be used else is bound to have errors in the programming so a good understanding is very necessary in order to write a series of instructions required to get the problem solved so we must understand the syntax of all these languages which include the basic the c 
the C++, the Python, and several languages. Now, these languages, after they have been written, sometimes computers don't understand them. The whole computer knows about zeros and ones, which is machine language. So we need a language translator that help us to translate the language from high-level language that is more understandable form to a machine language which is low-level languages. And these translators are in several forms. We have the assembler, we have the compiler, we have the interpreter. Assembler does more assembly language. The compiler does more on languages like C, language like C, plus plus and C sharp and Java. about. Now, I will have interpreter that has to deal with basic, Python, we we'll talked about JavaScript and Java. about. Now, the difference between this in, uh, language translator, they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses. In terms of speed, compiler is most efficient. In terms of error diagnosis, interpreter is most efficient. So, all depends on what you want to achieve and language of domain. So, all these language translators help us to translate them from high level languages to the language the machine understands. But in trying to do this process, after we have written, after you have been converted, then we can be able to try to test our program and to debug an error. In our subsequent video, we'll be seeing how to carry out testing and debugging of our program. Thank you.